Hello comic fans, here's Al Grey. Um, today I want to talk about some European comics that I've read in the last couple of weeks. Um, they are Zwei Victis, uh, five um, in a box set with five collected editions. Michel Veillon, Franca, Agent 327, and beneath that uh, there's a book that is called in Germany Jonas Valentin. Um, maybe start with this book here, Michel Veillon. This is the most questionable of these books in terms of recommendations. All the others are more or less uh, recommended. This, I don't know, uh, it's maybe for the old ones like me, uh, who read one iteration or the other of Michel Villon, this Formula um, uh, One racer, <laughs> who has obviously a, a certain place in, in French or Belgian-French comic history. Um, his creator, Jean Graton, here, uh, was befriended with many um, of these uh, Formula One guys and uh, he, know, he knew about this Formula One circus so his comics benefited from his insights big time. Um, what's a bit hard to swallow in these first uh, couple of stories, even though I find them thoroughly entertaining, but the um, old-fashioned morale is sometimes really a bit yeah, hard to swallow. Uh, for an instance, Daddy Vaillant, the father of our title-giving hero, always brags uh, that he had a firm hand when raising up his sons and uh, this is the basis for uh, their success and with firm hand he means uh, giving them some slaps here and then when it's needed like the old folks uh, did um, anyhow if you're if you can take this kind of time trip um, with all uh, all these per perspectives uh, in a very unironic fashion Michel Veillon is your thing, I guess, and I will totally follow the series, even though I don't have a big heart for car racing at all. So, um, Franca, this is highly recommended. A fantastic series, I guess. I just by, uh, taken by, by the start here, what's in this first volume, by Hank Cupers. Um, it circles around yeah, Franca here. Uh, in the very first stories, she doesn't look so modern, like here on the title. But this will change. And um, she is a secret secretary in a criminal museum uh, in these first stories. And... Uh, in the very first album, she's not even the title character or the central character, but this changed quickly when Hank Cupers realized uh, that she has the potential to lure many readers in uh, his comic cosmos. And I absolutely love his very um, idiosyncratic uh, blend of Lindy Claire or uh, way to do Lindy Claire. Um, his lines are have the same thickness on many many panels in the fore and in the background, which sounds a bit silly, but sometimes it uh, it really has a certain decorative effect. I feel, um, even though, of course, you see uh, the especially how the uh, characters uh, are how they are drawn is a bit mm, clunky like some kind of template but just a bit <laughs> uh, but it all the love for details and and um, for all these tiny bits that we are we can see here I think the very first story is highly enjoyable and it only got better uh, with the other 
three stories uh, that are included in this volume here in this collected edition like you can see how this ship here bends it's it's really uh, fascinating and uh, it's fantastic that you can see how um, Hank Cooper's improved over the run of the, se uh, the series here. Quickly to this uh, book here, which is maybe a bit of a guilty pleasure of mine, Agent uh, 327, uh, was hooked a bit by Martin Lodewijk, uh, Lode or Lodewijk who uh, wrote Storm, um, the Don Lawrence science sci-fi comic. This is totally different. Uh, stuff and uh, Martin Lodewijk is, or Lodewijk is obviously, uh, um, his uh, drawing style is totally different uh, about this um, agent of the Dutch uh, Secret Service. Uh, by the way, uh, two Dutch cartoonists here, Hank Kupers and uh, Martin Lodewijk. And he has always to disguise himself to, to come to the cen uh, center and here we have him bit the Dutch, so a bit smaller version of um, James Bond. This is the first collected edition of Jonas Valentin, um, drawn by Frank P, written by Baum. And in case you live in France and uh, this character seems familiar to you, but the name not so, uh, you rather knew him by this name here, Broussai, uh, which means wild hairdo, uh, referring to his uh, hairstyle. So we have uh, some drawings by the artist, different stuff here. Uh, like this book here is amazing uh, in terms of bonus material. Um, really, yeah, they went overboard with all the stuff here. It's almost a bit too much, but just almost. I mean, uh, I really love especially these um, pages in which appeared in Spirou, uh, the magazine Spirou, and where the first appearances or among the first appearances of Jonas Valentin, in which he gave advice how to make some kind of aquarium, how to uh, feed your turtle and uh, how to, yeah, what's, what's in stock for you when you go into the nature and just observe. And these are just nice observer, observations uh, by this uh, character, Brusai, aka Jonas Valentin. Um, and later on, we have two um, complete albums, but you see when I mean later on, they start here somewhere. Uh, many short stories and they are here. It's the Dream of the Whale, it's the German title. Here we have some prepare sketch. Uh, this book here seems to be really made by fans of this comic, which is not so, uh, well, hasn't been so famous, uh, I, I think. Uh, but with these collected editions, they will make this uh, comic famous. Very poetic, um, nicely drawn, nicely told story for, <laughs> look at this stuff here, for um, young people and old people obviously as well, because I can enjoy a heck out of these, the story here. It's a nice, um, well thought out story. So, not so nice, but pretty well mapped out and uh, highly engaging and intriguing is this uh, story here. Why Victis uh, or Woe to the Conquered? Um, it's, yeah, so to say, um, <laughs> Asterix. Uh, in realistic, it plays in the time of uh, Julius Caesar, and uh, De Bello Gallico is one of the main sources for the writers. By Victus is written by this guy here, Simon Rocker, aka Georges Ramaioli. Uh, he signs when he draws his comics with this name, George Ramaioli, however you pronounce him. And uh, when he writes stories, he is Simon Rocker. 
but it's the same guy. And I really have to check out uh, more of his stuff because this story here, uh, this long-lasting epos about um, 15 albums and I really had to be careful uh, to check here to, to, to give you uh, the right cover because on all the other covers you have at least uh, naked boobies. Oh no, the last one here. Yeah, but you can see it's not very child friendly here. Uh, the whole story. I, I wouldn't give it to anyone uh, younger than, let's say, 16 or so. Um, yeah. But um, what Simon Rocca, aka George Ramayoli, did here is very amazing. Uh, how to give us a history lesson about the, um, the conquering of uh, France, Gallien, uh, by uh, Julius Caesar and the old, the antique Romans. And we have these, uh, this map here uh, that helps a bit. Obviously, uh, the historic events are pretty confusing. There were alliances and um, they changed these alliances and the Brits were involved and uh, the um, Germans and, and the Celts. And yeah, different agendas uh, on this big war field that was France uh, back then. Simon Rocca, aka Georges Ramayoli, had a lot of help from Jean Giraud to get uh, into his career and a bit from Druyer as well. And yeah, what I really found amazing because the comic here reminded me a bit of um, prose novels, thick thousand page and more uh, prose novels that I read as a child or a young adult and uh, they were more important to me than any uh, history lesson in school like Zinui the Egyptian and whatever by one Mika Valtteri and I read by other authors not great literature by any means but very engaging and thrilling and and stuff that page turners that uh, don't make you feel like in a history lesson and uh, it's never boring. So, and I found it very amazing that uh, the aut author of the story here uh, quoted uh, stories like this uh, as an influence on his stuff here. So, but this comic wouldn't be uh, as great as uh, this stuff here is without the amazing drawing abilities by Jean-Yves Mitton. And I really have to be careful here again, therefore the markers, not to show you the wrong pages because I don't kid you uh, not, uh, on half of the pages you will find many naked characters. Uh, I mean, uh, for me it doesn't hurt and um, given that the um, old Celts and, and Germans and the, all the tribes in Europe, they've loved to fought to fight naked. Uh, this is some kind of historic fact and uh, of course you have to draw them naked and uh, this is what Jean-Yves Mitton did here. But um, they weren't all the time naked so I can show you some pages here and it focuses um, around this um, lady here, Amber or Boadica, like the um, Brit, oh, I see, naked, <laughs> um, like the uh, Eng English uh, queen later on who fought against uh, uh, the Roman occupa um, occupiers later on. But this is like the spoilers, like we uh, come to know in the story here, uh, a daughter or granddaughter of her. Of course, uh, these characters are the just the MacGuffins, uh, so to speak, that pulls you through the uh, story, totally fictional, um, like her prime uh, love interest, uh, this doctor, one Etruscan guy called Milo, and uh, we have a lot of evil characters like this dude there, 
here and yeah, just really nice drawings by Yves, uh, Jean-Yves Mitton. And um, the writer uh, Rocker said that you really have to uh, keep him on a short leash, uh, not to draw too many um, adult stuff there. Uh, after he gave him the first pages of um, of the script, he drew a lot of uh, erect penises. Obviously, it's a, it's an orgy in Rome, so it's historical accurate, but uh, not publishable, not, not so he had to change the stuff a bit. If you want Jean-Yves Mitton the full way, uh, you have to get Messalina by Jean-Yves Mitton, even though this is actually rather porn than anything else. However, I will do a Jean-Yves Mitton special um, uh, some sometimes later when it's not so hot. Uh, but I don't think that I will uh, talk about um, Messalina in any way because uh, this is just not suitable for um, this kind of platform here, I'm afraid. So, um, yeah, but this is a splendid edition here. Um, um, yeah. I highly, highly recommend it uh, by the German Kult Comics publisher. Thanks for listening and watching. Goodbye.